this is important. I call it a historical event for Tesla and Musk in terms of this new category, four years in the making. I mean, you got 2 million reservations, even if 40% of those convert based on our estimates, 800,000. I mean, this is going to be a new growth vehicle, obviously on the edge, the Mad Max design. But I think this is going to be successful. And I think, look, people like Miller, they're going to be driving this around yeah. New York. Wow, Matt, I hope you're listening in to yes. hear that well, one. Well, he's not going to get his wife to sign off on this. He's got the <laughs> Challenger with the scat pack. That's enough. Well, we're going to have to see if it can strap in um, a uh, you know baby, baby carriage in the back. Yes. So that would be the most important for him right now. Dan, tell us what you're, so you think this is going to be successful. Uh, tell us a little bit about some of the projections you've run and just how, um, you know, break down the numbers for us in terms of how this is going to play out for Tesla. Look, the important thing today is about pricing because that's that's really the unknown. We think pricing is probably sweet spot 60 to 70 K. And that's important. You also get tax credit there at that level at scale two to two hundred fifty thousand per year as we get into 2025 in terms of units. Now coming out, this is going to be complex to build. It's all going to be built out of Austin. That's where the launch will be today. But this is important because it goes back to, you know, something we've talked about on the show a lot is, is a refresh. It's just more categories. It's part of the halo effect. Contrast that GM Ford pulling back a little on EVs, yet Tesla Musk actually doubling down. So I think Elon himself has even said, Dan, that this kind of thing is, I guess in his opinion, kind of a profitability disaster, production disaster. It's so hard. Can you make any money on this truck? Is there any profitability in this truck yeah paul first 12 to 18 months no i mean they'll they'll essentially lose money it'll be cash flow negative but as you get into 2025 it actually could be pretty significant in terms of the, the accretive level as it all plays out at scale now 50,000 units we think that's probably max 2024 probably about 40,000 in terms of what they'll ultimately deliver but this is all about the next two to three years. It's giving them their other growth vehicle. And I think this is really the start of just the next phase of the Tesla growth story. This is four years in the making in terms of today's launch. Dan, tell us a little bit more about the competition that the Cybertruck is going to be stacked up against. I think, you know, the Ford, um, you know, F-Series, particularly the F-150, right? That's the best-selling truck that. in America, isn't it? I drove it? that F-150 yeah. Lightning. Yeah, beast. so the electric one there, sure. And then you've got the Ram, the Chevy, Silver the Chevy Silverado. I mean, it, how is this? How is the Cybertruck, you think, going to stack up against those? Well, F-150, I mean, that's, that's the target on the back. I mean, they're really trying to go for some sort of churn there. You look what Rivian's done, the success. Now, they've had a lot of difficulty in terms of building it out. But in terms of success from a demand perspective, you look at that opportunity, you look at what we see coming out of GM. Look, this is really creating a new category, but it's part of the halo effect. And I think the difference today, four or five years ago, everyone kind of viewed it as, okay, Tesla, they're not gonna be successful. Today, there's not an auto manufacturer executive around the world that won't be watching the event because you can no longer just say that it's not going to be relevant. It's actually the opposite in terms of their leading in terms of really innovation technology. Hey, Dan, when, when you speak with the folks at Tesla and when you also speak to the other uh, auto manufacturers, what are they, what's the thinking today about maybe the ultimate demand curve for EVs over the next five years? It seems to have lost a little enthusiasm out there. Yeah, I mean, look, I think no secret, you've definitely seen a moderation. But but I think the the view of, among many in the industry is, okay, let's say it doesn't go to 50 to 60% penetration. Let's say it goes to 30, 40% penetration next five, six years. That's $2 trillion in, in terms of the amount of ultimately opportunity out there in terms of electric vehicles. So you continue to see aggressive push toward this. I think the big thing, it's price discovery. You're not going to have 80, 90,000. You need to be in that sweet spot, 40 to 50K. And that's what we're seeing in terms of that price war that's played out, you know, well known in terms of what's happening in China. It's really price discovery. But finally, we're seeing some sort of supply demand equilibrium. But I don't really see a pulling back. GM Ford, that's essentially UAW that really forced that hand to pull back a little in terms of some spending.
So speaking of the economics of this, this is a tough time right now to be buying a car and to be, you know, persuading consumers that this is the time to be getting really excited about that when you have auto loan rates as high as they are. I mean, certainly the holidays, you know, big time to roll out a lot of incentives on price and maybe uh, rates if you can. But what exactly is the pitch right now to like financially that people might be getting excited about this? Well, the big thing, too, is tax credits. And I'd expect some more tax credit incentives as we go into 24, you know, from Biden administration, because that's a key point. If you go back historically, what's called 70, 80,000, now you're getting some of these EV vehicles, especially for Tesla, Y, and others, 35, 40,000 when it's all said and done. Here, you're going to have incentives, but no doubt, because what we've seen from a rising rate environment, that's been a huge headwind that does start to reverse in 24 that's why the comms get easier in 24 and i do believe we are still going into what i view as a golden age for electric vehicles and i think that's why it's important today for this event pricing it's really going to be a flex to muscles event for musk and tesla uh dan the stock tesla is up 97 percent year to date uh clawing its way back to its all-time high uh that had a couple years ago um you've been I would argue one of the biggest bulls on Tesla, on EVs in general, and then by extension, Elon Musk. How frustrating is it for you to see yesterday, for example, another situation where Elon Musk really comes into the news in not necessarily a good way on a company that's not even related to Tesla? How do you, how do you and investors kind of deal with the Elon Musk risk factor? Yeah, it's part of that spider web. I mean, even what we saw over X, and obviously, you know, he, he went to Israel in terms of the trip, and then if you look at the interview yesterday, I mean, clearly there's no going to be uh, no champagne dinner between <laughs> Musk and Iger anytime soon. I do think relative to Tesla, it is a bit contained relative to any sort of like brand deterioration. But as we talked about, I mean, Musk is Musk. He's going to go to the beat of a different drum. That's that's why you have the loyalists, but then, of course, the haters as well. And that's just, I think it's more accepted to some extent from a Tesla perspective, but no doubt it's a, it's a fine balance between from a brand issue or any sort of deterioration. Right now it's contained, but it's not what you want to see yesterday, ultimately, as a, as a Tesla holder.